All right, before we get the show started, I have to give a huge shout out to a special group of individuals that I like to call my Patreon podcast producers. And you know what? They're all on Instagram. So make sure you give them a follow. Daryl at Your Level Fitness, Caitlin at Caitlin Elise, put three Y's in her name, Crystal at Reduced Fat Mama, Joey at Joey Losing Weight, Vanessa at Vanessa Ray's Journey, and Amanda at Mutz underscore and underscore Miles. These guys are helping this show to move forward in a huge, huge way. And if you want to join this special group of individuals, make sure you stay tuned at the very end of the show for more details. Are you team Apple? I got to shout out all of you checking out this show right now on an iPhone, iPad, etc. In fact, nearly 70% of you are listening to me on one of these devices It would mean the world to me if you took a moment to leave a review. This is one of the best things that you can do for this podcast to help get the word out. And while you're at it, leave reviews for some of your other favorite shows. I bet they would really dig it. probably been about i want to say the last time you were on this podcast was probably may of last year i want to say could be yeah i think i think it was and one of the things that we talked about uh quite a bit was your health and fitness journey and i kind of wanted to to dive into that uh initially and talk about uh kind of where you're at now because you've just i mean look at you you look great man thank you well, I'm I'm happy to discuss and talk about anything you want. No, I have no requirements. In fact, the initial idea originally is I wanted to do a ton of stuff to promote Free the Dream Conference, but at this point, I really could care less about promoting Free the Dream. I <laughs> I I totally don't care how many more people buy tickets to this event because it's not my focus. Uh, my focus is just to add value to people's lives. That's all we can do. I, I feel like if if you're going to be somebody that's out there creating content and putting out a message, you better be giving value to people because if you're not, I think you're just self-serving yourself to kind of get out there, right? Well, I, I, well, I don't know about self-serving and, and stuff like that, but I, I won't question other people's motives. Are we Are we like in the podcast now? Oh, we're in it, man. Awesome, sweet. So I don't, I, I don't want to suggest that I'm going to question anybody else's motives. Sure. Uh, in fact, there have been plenty of times when I'm out there promoting, and and pr- I mean, I was promoting heavy stuff like that. And I don't know if it was just self-serving. I mean, it there's certainly some desires on my part to, 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 to make a profit in my business, to sure. sell products and services. It's how I provide for my family. And if you want to call that self-serving, yeah, I actually do care about serving myself. In fact, I believe it's a biblical mandate to serve yourself and your family. A matter, of, I, I, There's this one scripture that I just was looking up today. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Ter- First Timothy 5.8, anyone who does not provide for their own relatives and especially their own household has denied the faith and, faith and is worse than a non-believer. So yeah, I, 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 I look to serve my own self-interest through the products and services I create in an online business, and I don't feel guilty about that in the least. No, and I, However, I wouldn't either because, I mean, you're giving value to others. I mean, I, I guess that's more my point. I didn't mean to make it sound like it was like a negative thing. It was more or less, you know, providing value to others, I think, should, you know, be at the forefront of it. Well, yeah, I, I, I think so. Would, uh, how I mean, if anything that you do should provide value. That's how you get something in return. That's how you serve yourself is by providing value to others. Yeah. I mean, that's how, I mean, when it comes to how do we generate income for our business efforts, if we have business efforts, uh, or, or even if you have a day job, how do you, how do you get money? You show up by providing value to your employer. Oh yeah. Uh, and if you're self-employed, you, you, you generate income for your business by providing value to the people who gave you money. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I guess all that, yeah, I, I think it comes second nature to generating income, serving your own interest. It, it necessitates if you really want to do it well and long term and, and have a good reputation and some great integrity with, with your, your own standards and beliefs, then yeah, I think, I think value added 
uh, products and services comes into play for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Like I was saying a a little bit before, man, I mean, you look phenomenal right now. I think, uh, you know, in the last year you started doing keto, right? I started, uh, gosh, about 108 days ago or something like that. Let me, (laughs) I can tell you the number and I'm not surprised Cliff Ravenscraft. Well, let's see here actually. (laughs) Oh, look at this. It today is Thursday. I just now checked off and habit share today is day 109 on keto and I love it, man. It, by the way, it has nothing to do with losing weight for me. I was, yeah. as you know, I lost over a hundred pounds without keto, um, and and so it, it, I, I'm not on keto for the weight loss benefits. Although there are weight loss benefits associated for keto for for most people, but uh, yeah, 109 days, my friend. That is phenomenal. I, I have you ever have you ever looked into it? I've not really dove into it, probably because I am very stubborn when it comes to my workouts and my eating. I'm very kind of like particular about it. Uh, but I have, I will tell you, I've talked to many people on this very podcast who have lost tremendous amounts of weight and feel great, uh, doing keto. How, how did you find out about it? Michael Hyatt. Well, I first found out about it from my friend, Ray Edwards, who was diagnosed with Parkinson's several years ago. And, and the ketogenic diet is something that's been very highly recommended to people with, uh, Parkinson's, and other neurological conditions such as dementia and also children with epilepsy. Uh, There are some very well-known benefits for those individuals. Again, by the way, I'm not a medical doctor. I don't even play one on television. (laughs) So take no medical advice from me. By the way, I will give you no prescriptions of going on to the ketogenic diet. All I will give you are descriptions of why I love it. So right. no prescriptions, <laughs> only descriptions. Now, with that being said, Gary, yes. I, I'd, I'd love to continue to tell you, I, 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 I consider myself to be a little bit of a, an advocate for this lifestyle because I love it. And, and they're, okay, so I'm going to tell you, and, it, and it's so funny because it's, it's exactly what you just said when right. I asked you about it. Yep. I, so here's the deal. So my friend <clears throat> Ray Edwards is on it. And, and he tells me, and I'm like, ah, you know, I just don't like, I, I just don't like the idea of giving up all those carbs. Yeah. You know, I, I, I kind of like my baked potatoes. I like, I even like my sweet potatoes and, and I like the occasional French fry or the tater tot every now and then. And so I, you know, I, I, I'm okay with giving up sugar. And matter of fact, for a year and a half before I started keto, I had already given up sugar for the rest of my life. So it, it wasn't about giving up sugary sweets. It was just, I, I didn't want to let go of the carbs and I didn't need, I, it's like, but Cliff, do you know how much easier <laughs> weight loss would be on keto compared to what you're doing now? You're killing yourself in the gym. And I'm like, uh, well, hello. Uh, well, okay. So hold on. <laughs> I, okay. Let me reel myself in. Just give me a okay. second here. <laughs> start over. <laughs> so I learned about it about a year and a half ago. Yeah. And I start listening to some Dr. Berg and Thomas DeLauer and all this other stuff on there. And you know what really piqued my curiosity was this intermittent fasting that usually goes along with keto. Yes. Which you can do keto without intermittent fasting, and you can do intermittent fasting without keto. And there are benefits to either of them. But doggone it, look out what (laughs) happens when you put both of them together. (laughs) We'll get into that in just a moment. Yes. So anyway, the thing is, is that, uh, you know, I, I played around with intermittent fasting and intermittent fasting, uh, really helped me get my insulin under control. And when I got my insulin under control and I learned about the, you know, that, that insulin is this fat storage hormone that I was consistently racing through my body all the time. And I was killing it at the gym, but man, because I ate, you know, a big breakfast and I had all this insulin in my body, I'm not converting any of the fat. I'm not, I'm not burning fat. Right. And so when I started intermittent fasting, I saw some real awesome benefits and I started to see the weight dropped off. So I started doing like fasted cardio in the morning. So Cliff Ravenscraft eats dinner and after 7 p.m., don't eat a single thing. (laughs) And then next thing you know, it's seven o'clock in the morning. I've been fasting for 12 hours. I go to the gym. There's no insulin in my body. And Gary, I, you know, I used to work out sometimes one to three hours in a single morning. Yeah. And sometimes twice a day and sometimes twice a day. <laughs> and so you figure you go to the gym, you, you go to the gym for two hours on the Stairmaster. Yes. All right. I'm burning 1200 calories. Yes. And there's no insulin in my body and there's no food in my body. 
So what? Ha- where is that? Where is that? Where are those calories coming from? It's it, it's my body is turning fat and and converting it and burning it off. Right. And so I I saw massive weight loss that was without keto but intermittent fasting. So I love the intermittent fasting stuff. The only thing is, is after Free the Dream Conference last year, Free the Dream 2018, I found myself into, into what I will call a financial pickle, all right? So find, Free the Dream was an amazing success and life transformational for everybody who came to the conference last year. But I sold $60,000 in ticket sales, and the event cost me $66,000. So I lost $6,000 on the event itself, but during the marketing of that event, I was not marketing other things in my business. And when it all came down to it, I was about $38,000 in the hole. So wow. after, after Free the Dream 2018, I had some work to do to make up all that money I just lost. So I really lost focus for a while on, on eating healthy and stuff like that. I was still working out, Yep. but I, I wasn't working out one to three hours a day or two to three hours a day. I was working out 45 minutes a day getting my, cause I have this commitment. I'm going to work out six days a week, every week for the rest of my life. That's just a no brainer, but I was working out the minimum 45 minutes of cardio, whatever. Now the thing is, is because Cliff Ravenscraft has never given up on, on the carbs, just the sugar. What I found, Gary, is, is that after a long, you know, 8, 10, sometimes 12, 13 hour, 14 hour day doing all the things necessary to, to not only generate the amount of income that I need in my business, but to also generate enough income to pay back that $38,000 I was in the hole. Yeah. I, I was, those were some pretty strong emotional days. So at the end of those days, I found myself, you know, it's like I can have a couple chips you know, be, while I'm sitting here watching some TV at night, binging. Oh yeah. And when when I say a couple of chips, I am talking about an entire family bag of Doritos. All right, yes. family size bag of Doritos. You know, the one that's got 14 servings in it, or 38 <laughs> servings, or whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. me. And and the thing is, it's like it's like, oh, it's no big deal. I'll go to the gym. I'll burn it off tomorrow. I'll work out for three hours. But I go to the gym the next day. I work out 45 minutes. And I didn't put a dent into all those calories I ate the night before. And so here's the crazy thing. I'm still working out six days a week every week. But over the course of about six months, I put on about 35 pounds. Yeah. And I'm like, what the heck? And so finally, <laughs> I, I, but here's the deal. Dude, I'm generating mad cash in my business. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I was generating mad cash in my business. It's just I shifted the focus off of eating healthy and, and maintaining my fitness and health levels. And I put all of my focus on generating mad cash in my business. Very successful at doing that. Got myself out of that financial hole. But then I realized, what the heck is this? I can't see. It's like before I could actually see my toes when I looked down. And now I don't see my toes anymore. Right. What the heck's going on here? <laughs> I, so I, I, I created a podcast episode and I went to my audience. It was titled, It's Confession Time. And this was back in May. Right of this year. So back in May, I said, guys, remember when I told you I'll never be over 200 pounds again in my life? Well, let me explain to you what happened. And I basically told them the not so abbreviated story that I just told you. So I told them the whole story. And then I said, and and here I find myself, I'm at 221 pounds. This is ridiculous. And I'm going to, I'm going to put an end to this right now. And I've, I've learned from this. I'd like to tell you right now, this will never happen again. And I do believe that. But, you know, I, I, so here I go again. And so I'm back at the gym, you know, working out one to three hours a day. And I'm trying to be a little bit more intentional about my food choices and stuff like that. And my friend, Michael Hyatt, do you know who Michael Hyatt is? I've heard the name from your very podcast. All right. Well, Michael Hyatt's very well known in, in my space, in my industry. And he's he's kind of a, he's, he's a pretty awesome dude. So anyway, he reaches out to me, says, Cliff, you know, I, I just heard your episode, Confession Time. And, and dude, I applaud you for your authenticity. That's one of the things I've always loved about you because I, I, I'd love to just personally make sure that you understand, or re- I would like to personally recommend, dude, you ought to just try out the keto diet. Just give it a shot for 30 days. Right. You don't need, you don't need <clears throat> to kill yourself at the gym. Now, <laughs> hold on a second. Okay. Tell me if this sounds familiar, and if it and if it doesn't sound familiar, I want you to rewind it to when I ask you, have you ever looked into the keto diet? Because here's what I told Michael Hyatt. Matter of fact, I said to him, I said, listen, Michael, I really appreciate it. I've looked into the keto diet, but quite frankly, I love my workouts. 
Yep. And I love the way that I've got my eating set up. I was able to successfully lose over a hundred pounds without the keto diet. And I know that I know where I lost my focus. I know the mistakes that I made. And quite frankly, I'm not looking to change it at the gym. I enjoy it. You may, it may sound crazy, but I really enjoy my one to three hours a day at the gym. It's where I go and I listen to personal development material. It's where I, I, I listen to podcasts, audio books, and all this other stuff. It, it, I, that, that is, that's, the one to three hours of the day I look forward to the most. So I really appreciate it. I, you know, but I I've got this under control. Here's what I will tell you. I respect you so much. I want you to know that your recommendation certainly tips the scale in the, you know, give keto a chance kind sure. of category. But quite frankly, I just don't know that I need it. And, and, but I'll, I'll keep it under consideration. Right. That's, does that sound familiar? Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, you look at everything you've done. I mean, you were very successful at your at your weight loss. So I think a lot of people, they think like, well, if it ain't broke, why fix it? I'm just going to keep doing my routine, right? That's exactly what I thought. Yep. All right. So Gary, let me tell you what happens next. All right. Let's hear it. So my wife and I are on the way to the gym. We're literally on the way to a second workout of the day. We've <laughs> already done 90 minutes. We're getting ready to do an hour. Right. Cause we're in it, man. We're, we're yeah. in it. So, um, I tell her what Michael Hyatt said to me and she goes, well, we've been talking about keto for a long time. We could do anything for 30 days. Now my, my wife is basically what I, you, you probably did not hear the same thing that I just heard. What did you <laughs> just hear that my wife said? She said, we've been, we've talked about it. We've, we've already looked into it. And, and we've all, we talked about what the keto diet. Exactly. And so that's what you heard. Yeah. All right. <laughs> now here's what I heard. My wife just said to me, I could, we could give up sugar for 30 days. Yeah. That's what she, see, she didn't think that she said that. All <laughs> she says, we could do anything for 30 days, including this keto thing. Sure. But here's the thing. If you're going to give keto a try for 30 days, you are literally giving up sugar for 30 days. See, I didn't, the, the whole idea of giving up sugar for 30 days to do 30 days of keto. That means nothing to me because I've already been without sugar in my life for over a year. Yeah. All right. My wife has never, I don't think she's ever been more than like three days without sugar in her lifetime. <laughs> and if, and, and so in my feeling is like, man, if I can support my wife in anything that would help her understand how, and I'm going to say these words, I don't care who it ticks off, how toxic and poisonous sugar is. It is literally as bad for you as fatty liver disease. It will cause fatty liver disease and kill you just as quickly as alcoholism. Go look it up. Do the research. It is toxic. Sugar is killing you. All right. So now that I've gotten that off my <laughs> chest. So my wife says, we could, we could do this. And so I'm like, okay, if you're in for 30 days, I'm in for 30 days. We're going keto for 30 days. Yeah. Now- I did all this research, which by the way, if you go to mindsetanswerman.com slash resources, that takes you to a page where tons of people were asking me about my keto journey. And I, I put all the most free answers to all the most frequently asked questions at mindsetanswerman.com slash resources. Go read that. It'll tell you everything about the whole keto journey of that I had and stuff like that. Now, the thing is, is I researched keto flu. I researched how long does it take for you to become quote unquote fat adapted to get rid of all your glycogen stores? When are you actually in ketosis? How much protein, fat, and carbohydrates should you consume? What are the actual macronutrients? You know, 70 to 75% fat, 20 to 25% um, protein, and zero to 5% carbs. You know, no more than, tw you know, it's no more to, than 20 to 50 carbs per day total. All of this stuff, I studied all of this stuff. We lived according to it and all this other things. Now, here's the interesting thing, Gary. I started losing weight like crazy. Now, the thing is, I was also doing intermittent fasting with ketosis. Right. All right, so I'm doing ketosis, and we're also doing, I think we started out, we started eating at 10, and we finished eating by 4. So however many hours, I think it was like a six-hour window. We were doing a six-hour window of eating, and then we would fast for the remainder of, of the 24-hour period. And so we were doing that, and then in the, key, in the 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. window, I was eating all things that are, were healthy ketosis. Now, 
within 30 days, I think I, if I had to guess, I probably lost, I don't know, maybe 20 pounds. The interesting thing though, is that I lost all of that weight with only 40 minutes a day, 40 to 45 minutes a day of the lightest workouts you've ever imagined in your life. It's insane. And in fact, <clears throat> Gary, I got to the place where, you know how I said, I'm going to work out six days a week, every week for the rest of my life. Yes. Last month, I had a lot of business travel. All right. Had a ton of business travel. And my workouts literally consisted of a 45 minute light stroll outside. We're not talking brisk walk. I'm talking, I walked for 45 minutes. And if I walked 3,000, 4,000 steps, that's pretty much what I got in. My heart rate never even got into like zone three or anything like that. We're not even talking cardio. It's just, I went out for a walk because I made a commitment. And the thing is, is the lightest workouts I've ever done in my life and I was still losing, on average, five pounds to eight pounds a week That's on keto. That's insane. Now, here's the other thing I will tell you. Uh, so I started out with this 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. window and all this stuff, and it took a while to get rid of the car- the cravings for the carbs. After about three weeks, I never craved carbs again. And I, Michael Hyatt told me something that I thought he was just he was just pulling my leg. Not other than the fact that I know he would never lie to me. He says, Cliff, the funny thing is, is I've never had more energy before. I've never had more clarity before. And oh, by the way, I never experience hunger. Wow. All right. Now, Gary, get this. I've been on keto for 109 days. I now eat, I I do what's called OMAD when it comes to intermittent fasting. Do you, have you heard of OMAD? OMAD, I have not. Tell me about OMAD. OMAD is one meal a day. Wow. I eat one meal a day, and I eat that meal within a 35-minute to one-hour window of time. Sometimes it's you know just a, you know 20 minutes to eat, eat my one meal. I eat one meal a day, not because I'm hungry, but I eat the one meal for one reason and one reason alone. Not because I need energy. Only one reason. I eat it because of the nutrients and vitamins and minerals that my body requires. Right. That's the only reason I eat today. Gary, I have not experienced the sensation of hunger in over two months. That 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 sounds crazy to me now. I'm telling you, because I eat like three meals a day. I can't you tell me one meal, like I know it's possible, but I'm like, man, this sounds crazy. Dude, let me tell you. Here's what I will tell you. My one meal of the day, I will put in I will put two cups of spring mix salad into a bowl. Yes. I will put probably about three or four slices of bacon bits mm. into that bowl. I'll cut up some and dice up some red onion, put that into the bowl. Um, I might have some boiled egg, or, you know, hard boiled eggs. I might cut that up and put that into the bowl. I'll sprinkle some salt and pepper on it and I might drizzle on a little bit of olive oil. And I might even put in a little minced garlic just for a little added flavor. All right. We're talking that that meal is probably around 600, 700 calories. It's full of tons of amazing nutrients. And who knows? I might even cut up four ounces of chicken sometimes to put into that salad. Here's what I will tell you. I don't know if you've ever seen two cups of salad mix, but two cups of salad mix is a lot of salad mix. Yeah. And, And to eat that one meal... Halfway through, I am stuffed. I mean, like, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is it hurts. And, but I, but I finish eating. I eat, I eat that, and dude, it's like, oh man, I don't know if I might just skip my meal tomorrow. <laughs> and I, I, seriously, it, it's so crazy. I, I, it's, it's so cool to never be hungry. And you don't get any of that bloated feeling when you're eating it. No, no, not at all. Wow. I, I, yeah, I, I don't have any of that ex, that stuff. The only thing is, is when I started keto, my wife wanted to replace some of the sweets that she missed. And and so there are all si- sorts of keto desserts that you can make that have no sugar and they're very low carb to no carb. You can get erythritol and and swerve and all this other stuff. And, and um, 
uh, all I can tell you is you can eat all that stuff and it will not kick you out of ketosis. And it and depending on how, your own biology, it may or may not cause insulin spikes. It did not cause insulin spikes with me. But I will tell you, eating all of those keto desserts, uh, all those sugar alcohols, they can they can disrupt your tummy in a in a unpleasant way. If it, and and I I won't go into more detail than that. <laughs> but uh, but let's just say that that. I didn't need the sweets. And so I, I, I pretty much started to back off all of those keto sweets, even though they, they technically fit in healthy keto. Eh, I, I, I don't need them and I'm not hungry. Why should I even bother? And, and I kind of like not having to run to the bathroom really fast. <laughs> how, and how is Stephanie liking it? Is she uh, taking to the diet very well, the keto diet? She saw very little success on keto. However, when it came to weight loss, yes. Um, however, she loves it for all sorts of other reasons. She loves the fact that she's off the sugar. Uh, believe it or not, she she absolutely <laughs> loves that. It's, it has also changed inflammation in her body. So Stephanie has always experienced a lot of pain. Uh, she gets weekly massages, goes to see the chiropractor uh, once a week or every other week. And so the thing is, is that she's always had an experience with lots of inflammation. And because she's cut out the carbs, she doesn't experience inflammation. And you can research uh, the insulin and, and the effects of insulin and all that other stuff and the other stuff that comes along with, with all the, the – how, how ketogenic diet actually helps you reduce inflammation in your body. So there's a lot of reasons why she loves the ketogenic diet. But we just hired her a ketogenic expert medical coach. So she's actually – I think what she's experiencing is some issues with her hormones right. because of the stage of life that she's in. And so she's not seeing the same sorts of results just on plain old keto like I am. So she's getting her hormones checked, her blood checked, and, and they're working on figuring out why she's not getting the same sort of results on the weight. Uh, on the weight loss. And they, I expect that probably within the next 30 to 60 days, they'll have all that worked out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you what, I, I, uh, I was out your way back in May. Have you heard of the flying pig? Oh yeah. Yeah. Cincinnati. It's right across the river from me. Yeah. I, I was staying, I, it couldn't have been too far from your place. And, uh, I was going to ask you if you had, I don't know if you attended this year, but if not, I was going to see if you were going to be attending next year's race. Uh, well, I don't do any of those those sort of events. Um, I, I I was doing uh, what's called Race Cincinnati, so I love to ride my bike. I I, I prefer not to run on pavement personally. Sure. sure. And it's just it's just not something I enjoy. But uh, if you ever get on a bike and you want to go ride a hundred miles, I'll go on a hundred mile bike ride with you. <laughs> I need to get, I, I do need to get a bike. I've been slacking on that. I, that's one thing I remember is that you love riding your bike and you'd go out for these like crazy long bike rides. That's one of the things that's on my list for this year is to get, is to get on a bike and get out there. I've been doing a lot of walking in the woods lately. I've been doing some, some vlogs where I will just walk five, six miles out in the woods. And I'm, I've been taking like one day of the gym away and replacing it with one day out in the woods. Yeah. I, I mean, here's the thing. You just got to do what you enjoy. Yeah. And, and, and that, that's the important thing, but yeah, I, that, I do enjoy getting out for bike rides. I have not been on my bike at all this year, which is ridiculous. But, uh, for the last five years before this, I got, or well, not five years, I started in 2015, so 2015, 16, 17, 18. So for the past four years before this, I would do usually no less than three to five 50 plus mile rides a week. Sometimes. Wow. How long would the, how long would like a 50 mile ride take you? 50 mile ride is a four to five hour ride. A hundred and a hundred to 110 mile ride is a whole nine hour day. Wow. And when you think of just a commitment of, of your time, you know, it's very, very precious, very valuable, especially when you're, when you have an event like free the dream that you're planning, I can only imagine how much of your day that must take up. Yeah. The, the interesting thing though, is, is, um, one of the things that I've done in my business pursuits is first of all, I, I built my business in such a way that I don't have to do very much to prepare for free the dream other than my own talks. Sure. And my own talks are, you know, they're, they're the message in my heart. I've already outlined them. I've got my slides. Those are already done. 
And then, of course, I have also, um, you know, my speakers to invite, and I've already invited them. They know what they're going to talk about. And then when it comes to all the other stuff, all the production, the audio video crew and and the tables and and catering and stuff, I hired an event management team and I just paid them a couple thousand dollars to manage everything for me. So I don't have to think about any of that stuff. Now, and la- so, la- I'm sorry, last year, was that more, were you more like hands on with it last year? No, no, you had a team, you had a team working on it last year. Yeah. Th- th- yeah. So that's why it cost me $66,000 because, <laughs> yeah. Because I, I, I mean, I, I didn't want to, I did not want to handle any of that. But I literally rolled into Franklin, Tennessee last year, showed up for the mic for the tech rehearsal, just like my speakers did, and then I took my speakers out to dinner. That was it. And then the next day, I, I show up, I speak. I spoke three times on Friday, three times on Saturday, and I spoke once on Sunday. My other speakers spoke the rest of the time, and all I did was interact and engage with the people who came to the event from all over the world. And then at the end of the event, I literally said goodbye to everybody. And after I was finished saying goodbye to everybody, everything from the event that needed to come home with me, my event team had already packed up in our car. We picked up our car or we hopped in the car and drove away. I literally didn't lift a finger to do anything when it comes to the planning of the event. Wow. What, what's one thing? Because last year was your first event, right? Yeah. What are some of the lessons that you get when you put on like a first time event and then you say, okay, next year I want to do it again. What are some of the lessons that you learned from the first year that you put into the second year? Well, the, the event actually itself was perfect. I I know that that sounds crazy. There's no way, but seriously, it was perfect. Um, and it, and it was the exact fulfillment of my dream. What I didn't know and what I applied this year that I didn't, uh, that I totally screwed up last year was the marketing of it. I, I had never marketed an event like this before. I never hosted one. So all I did was I, I went to friends of mine who have hosted events before. And I said, if what's the number one thing you would recommend? They said, well, hire an event team to manage it for you. Check did that. All right. And I hired the event management team that they hired. So Got that one under control. The only thing I didn't know is how to market it. And so that's why, you know, I sold $60,000 in ticket sales, which is pretty darn amazing for your first ever event. I'd say so. But, uh, but I did, but the thing is, is it, I, I was hoping to sell, you know, a hundred thousand or even maybe $150,000 in ticket sales. I didn't get there obviously. So one, I, I, I took the things that I learned about marketing that event. I started marketing sooner. Um, this event this year is only 21 days and 16 hours away from right now. And uh, at 21 days until the event, we're already past, well past break even on the event. So any ticket that sells within the next 21 days is pure profit. Wow. So you're already, you're already trending ahead than you, than you were last year. Yeah. Yeah. We're definitely trending ahead. And I also made a decision, um, I also made a pretty radical decision that free the dream actually isn't my number one priority in my business. Last year it was number one priority in my business. Yes. Uh, this year for actually for the first seven months of this year, it was the number one priority in my business. However, starting July 1st through right now, which we're recording this on August 22nd, it's no longer, it's like the it's like the third priority in my business right now. So it's dropped from number one down to number three. It's still a priority. Yes. As a matter of fact, I just signed the contract for Free the Dream 2020, which is going to be July 24th, 25th, and 26th of next year. You're running a little bit so, earlier in the year, huh? Yeah, a little bit earlier in the year. And we decided to do that because this last year and this year are in mid-September. Yep. And there's a there's a lot of people who said, Cliff, I would come, but the kids are in school. They just kind of started back to school. And and so we got so much of that. So it's like, okay, well, let's do the summer. Yeah. It's a nice time of year. You know, it's, it's uh, everybody likes to be out traveling during the summer. I'm going to North Carolina this weekend to go to Carowinds. I know you like amusement parks. Uh, I'm going yep. down to uh, Carowinds to check out Fury 325 and the brand new uh, Copperhead Strike. I'm excited about that. You need to come out to Kings Island with me, man. I I got a season pass. I you know what I have I have I have the season pass as well. It's the Cedar Fair because we have Kings Dominion here in Virginia, and I've got the pass that'll get me into all the parks. And so I was talking with my buddy, and I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit Cedar Point and Kings Island within a weekend. Nice. Yeah. Well, when you go to Kings Island, let me know. I'll come out and meet you. Definitely, definitely would love that. Uh, what's uh what's the what's the best ride right now in Kings Island? 
Oh, the best ride at King's Island. <laughs> I would say Banshee is definitely my favorite. Yeah. Um, the Diamondback is really cool. It's it's a really tall and fast coaster. I really love, um, oh gosh, Mystic Timbers, which is a wooden coaster. Yeah. And of course, old school bat. I mean, I, I'm sorry, the beast. You can't beat the beast. The beast is still a classic and it still rocks your world. So the beast is awesome. Um, yeah, th those are my favorite. And I like Flight of Fe I think it's called Flight of Fear, which is one of those indoor uh, yeah. coasters. I I really like that one. We have that one here as well. I, I think when they were Paramount, when Paramount owned them, they had a lot of yep. uh, clone type rides, Flight of Fear. You guys have Mystic Timbers. We have Twisted Timbers here. So they're very, yep. very similar. Uh, but Cedar Point also is another one. I'm sure you've been up that way. I, that's one place that's always eluded me. I've, I've always wanted to go there. Yeah, that's crazy. I've never been up to Sandusky, Ohio to never. Cedar Point either. I've never been there. Wow. I've always had, I mean, Kings Island's in my, it's pretty much 40 minutes from my house. So, you know, it's, it's like, how, wh why do you go there when you have one within 40 minute drive? This is Although true. I know that they have, they have some pretty amazing coasters up there. So I'd have to check it out sometime. Yeah, they've got the uh, the Top Thrill Dragster, the, um, oh, now the name, it's going to kill me now because everybody's probably, oh, Steel Vengeance, Steel Vengeance. That's like the big, that's like the bigger brother of Mystic Timbers and Twisted Timbers. Yeah. So, yeah, that's good stuff, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to talk to you about today is a lot of your uh, content creation. You know, you're you're very busy with your with your business, but also you work in time for the content creation. You still do the podcast. I know you're active on Facebook and YouTube, and kind of talk some of your strategy with uh, creating video and things of that nature. Well, I just create content whenever I feel inspired to share something. Of course, um, I was creating content on a daily basis there for a little while. And I, I have seasons of my life where I do that. Um, and then I have seasons where I kind of just like to hide in my little introvert hole and, and, and just focus on things that have fun and, and devote myself to a lot of time of personal growth and development. Yeah. So it just depends on whatever season of life I'm in. I do put out a weekly episode of the Cliff Ravenscraft show. I just published episode number 616 wow. where it's the title of the episode is can I invo can I invest in coaching at this level. So I just made a decision um, that I applied for a business coach that cost $100,000. Wow. That's so that, That's quite a price for a coach. Yep. So I'm, I'm looking at, I, I have a call with him scheduled uh, September 3rd. And if I'm accepted, I'm, I'm looking to invest $100,000 into my own business coach. And uh, I, if, 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 if it all works out, my commitment is the way that I'm going to afford that and also do some things that I should have done so many years ago in my business. I'm going to, I'm going to generate a minimum of a million dollars next year in my business. That's incredible. I mean, you've been at this yeah. for how long now? When did you quit the insurance business? How long ago was that? I, I, I quit my insurance job December 31st, 2007. So I, I've been self-employed since January 2008. I've had, every, I've had every opportunity to make a minimum of $1 million every single year since 2012. And I've, just, I've only barely ever went over a half million dollars. And I, September 2017, I shut down 100% of all my streams of income related to podcast coaching and, so that I could go from podcast answer man to mindset answer man. And the thing is, is I went from half million dollars a year to, you know, what, a quarter of a million in my business. The thing is, is I, even then I could have made a million dollars in 2017. I could have made a million dollars last year. Uh, I could have made a million dollars this year. And I've never done the things necessary to make a million dollars. And and then I'm like, okay, I've had enough of this. I am going to hire a coach. And I and if I hire a coach for $100,000, I expect to get a 10x return next year. So I'm going to generate a million dollars. And I and by the way, if you listen to, if you go to the Cliff Ravenscraft show in, in any of your podcast directories and you listen to episode 616, I, I literally tell you, exactly how I will generate. It, it's real simple. It's real simple. It's only $83,000 a month in your business. It's just a math problem. And right. I'm like, yeah, I, I know exactly how I'm going to generate a million dollars next year. The thing is, is there's no doubt that I can do it. I have 
everything at my disposal. The only thing I need is leverage of what's at stake if I don't do it. And if I invest in a $100,000 in a personal coach, I, it will be pretty painful if I don't live up to what I'm able to do when it comes to that. And there's other things that I should have, could have, would have done in my family when it comes to being a great steward and and just being able to achieve some of the things that I think are necessary to be a, a good husband, father, and also just a great person in society to contribute at a level beyond what I've been doing. So yeah, there, there's a lot at stake for me if I don't make a minimum of $1 million next year in my business, and I'm going to hire me a, a coach for $100,000 that's going to get me there. Well, you want to talk about personal development. That's one heck of an investment right there. I'll tell you what. Yep. Well, if, if I, I encourage people to listen to that podcast episode because the question I originally asked myself is how, because there's no play. I mean, with, with the amount of money I've made this year, I do, I cannot afford a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. That, I, I can't do it. Matter of fact, because of the way that I've done things financially in my business and personal things, and just how many times I've tried to, re, I have no, not tried how many times I've chosen to reinvent myself and give up one thing, pursue something different. Just the way that I've done things. I can't even, I have, I was, I'm at a place where I can't even afford the semester of college that my daughter is at right now at Western Kentucky university. The reality is, is I could go and do something in a weekend and pay for it. I mean, I can host a, a, a workshop for how to build a profitable coaching career and have 12 people pay me $5,000. That's $60,000 in a single weekend. That'll pay for the, re, that'll pay for the remaining, remaining three years of her college. Right. And I can do that in a weekend. The thing is, is Gary, I could have done that once a month, every month for the last year. And I haven't done it. Why not? Yeah, because because there's not enough pain associated to not doing it. <laughs> so if you listen to episode six sixteen of my podcast, I start off with the question, "Man, how can I afford?" Uh, you know, can, or the question is, "Can I afford this? Can I afford a hundred thousand dollar investment in my own person and my own professional coach?" And by the end of the episode, I lay out everything, and it and you anybody who thinks that's just nuts. Yeah. But then if you if you get to the end of the episode, you'll understand that there's no way that I could afford not to invest a hundred thousand dollars in the coach. Yeah. I, I will ask you this though. You you talk about reinventing yourself multiple times. And I mean, in, in our minds, we, we think about like this natural pivot where our heart's kind of leaning us to go to, but I mean, from a business perspective, when you're bringing in, you know, so much revenue like that, how difficult of a decision is it, or is it not difficult to make that transition? It's as difficult as you choose to make it in your own mind. How so? The one, the one, what's that? How so? Tell me about it. Well, the thing is, if you choose to, to believe it's difficult, then you'll think about all the ways that it's difficult. And, and by the way, there's no doubt in that if you are looking for ways that shutting down all that revenue that you've de come to depend on, that how, how many difficulties that will bring into your life. If you choose to focus on those, you'll find all sorts of them. Yeah. The thing is, is if you choose to think that it's easy and how much benefit you're going to get out of shutting it all down and how much better your life will be, if that's what you choose to focus on, then it'll be easy because you'll be, it's like, listen, this may be difficult in the short term, but long term, this, these are all the benefits that I'm getting. It's kind of like, listen to episode 616. Is it difficult to, to invest $100,000 in a personal, in a professional coach when you can't afford it? The answer is no. It's super easy. Listen to episode 616 of the Cliff Ravenscraft show. You will see how easy it is for me to invest $100,000 into a professional coach because of where my focus is. And so for me, yeah, I was making a half million dollars as the podcast answer man, but I was working 40, 60, 70 hours a week doing stuff that was keeping me from doing the work I felt most called to do in this world. I didn't right. have it. I hardly had it, enough time to create my own weekly podcast. And, and it's just like, this isn't what I want to do. And so I'm like, Hey, if I was to, if, if I, what would it, what would life be like if I shut down every single piece of revenue coming in from teaching people how to podcast so that I never got another technical question in my email box that said quick question. And then it's, Hey Cliff, I just bought this mixer and I got this thing and this device. What cables do I need? I never want to see that question again in my life ever. And I was getting it hundreds of times a month. And I'm like, 
I've got to, I, I hate this. I, this is not how I want to spend my life. Yeah. And so I started asking myself, would it be possible for me to replace podcasting A to Z, which by the way, podcasting A to Z was a course where on average, 20 people paid me $2,000 uh, for four weeks of coaching. I did that six times a year. Do the math. That's $240,000 a year in my business. And so I asked myself, would it be possible for me to replace the $240,000 a year? But which, by the way, that took me 40 hours a week during the four weeks of co during the four weeks of the course coaching. So that was 40 hours a week doing that during those six months. And it took me another 40 hours a week during the off months trying to convince 20 people to pay me the $2,000 for the next session. So I was working around the clock to generate. Now, some people are like, oh, woe is you, Cliff. If I could only make $240,000 <laughs> and I only had to work 40 hours a week, I know. First world problems. But my question is, would it be possible for me to replace that income and make that amount of money in six hours a week? And so I started to ask myself crazy questions. And I created something called the Next Level Mastermind, which is $1,000 a month. And I found 24 people to pay me $1,000 a month. That's two groups that meet 90 minutes a week. That's a total of three hours of facilitating meetings. And if you think about three more hours of engaging with those members in between the meetings, I now generate $240,000 a year in less than six hours a week of my life. It's so let me ask you, Gary, let me ask you, if that's what you were going after, would that be an easy decision or a hard decision? That would be pretty easy to me. Now, that's that, you, exactly, now that you lay it out, though, you know what I mean? Now that you lay it out. That's exactly why it was an easy decision. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that is just so, I've, that is just so phenomenal to me that, uh, you know, I think that you're just on like a whole other level of thinking that I, th you're thinking of things that I probably would never even think about. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can I can assure you of that, and it and the and the reason why is not because I'm any better than you. Sure, it's just it, the people that I listen to are thinking ten levels higher than I think. Right. So if you think I'm thinking at higher levels and and seeing things from perspectives you're not able to see, the thing is is I here, here's what I can do. Here, uh, Gary. You and I had an exchange about a year ago. We did. And 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 I was trying to give you some advice about some things that are available to you and stuff like that. And the thing is is I, I can tell you right now, I know for a fact, Gary, that you could be making $10,000 a month of recurring revenue in no less than 6 hours a week. Guaranteed, I absolutely know it and I can see it. You you've been surrounded by it. It's been available to you for more than 18 months since I've been following you. Yes. The only thing is, is that you don't see it. And so therefore, because you don't see it, you don't, you don't go after it. That's fair. Yeah. But it's there. It's been there the whole time. I'll give you a perfect example of this. All right. All right. So a couple years ago, this was back in 2000. 2011 or 2012, I can't remember. Let's just say 2012 just for the sake of choosing a year. All right. All right. I decided I wanted to create a brand new stream of income in my business that would generate an extra $10,000 a month. Who wouldn't want that, right? Yeah. All right. So I'm thinking membership program. All right. So the thing is, I didn't want to create a membership program where I had to get thousands of people you know, you know, a thousand people, how many people would to pay $10,000 a month? I I'd need 10,000 people to pay me $10 a month that, that, or whatever. I, yeah. I don't know what all them. All I knew is I didn't <laughs> want a low price and I didn't want to have to service thousands of people. Right. I didn't even want to serve it, have to service hundreds and hundreds of people. I I'm thinking, I wonder if I could actually create a membership program where a hundred people pay me a hundred dollars a month. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that that's $10,000 a month. Okay. Yeah. So I'm thinking, what could I offer? And of course, I'm thinking mastermind groups. I love mastermind groups. It's radically changed my life, and I know it could change the life of every person that I would have in a group. So I went to my business mentor and coach at the time. I, he wasn't a paid coach. He was a friend of mine who offered to mentor me for free. His name is Dan Miller, author of the book, 48 Days to the Work You Love. And I went to him and I said, Dan, I've got this great idea 
And I just wanted to run it by with you and see what you think. He's the one who introduced me to the concept of masterminds in the first place. So I told him, I said, I've, you know, I wanted to create a, a $10,000 a month stream of income. And he says, that sounds awesome. I says, how are you going to do it? I said, well, I'm going to create a program. It's $100 a month. He goes, that sounds amazing. And, and I sit there and he says, what are people going to pay for? Well, I said, I've been thinking about that. I want to do mastermind groups. The thing is, though, is I want to limit each group to no more than 10 people. So these groups are going to be $100 per month per person. So 100 people who pay $100 per month. I'm going to have 10 different groups with 10 people in them. They're going to meet twice a month. So I'm going to have five groups that meet on the first and third weeks of the month and five groups that meet on the second and third weeks of the month. And our first and third and the second and fourth. All right. So that's only five one hour meetings per week that I would facilitate. That's five hours a week of, of facilitating mean, meetings for $10,000 of income. I think this is a brilliant idea. Gary, do you think that's a brilliant idea? I think it is. Would you like to make $10,000 a, a month recurring revenue with 100 people paying you $100 a month and all you had to do is facilitate five one hour calls a week? I, I, I would love that. I would have loved it too. And let me tell you, I said, Dan, what do you think? And do you guess what he told me? What did he tell you? He says, that sounds like a terrible idea, Cliff. <laughs> Why is that? He says, you're going to burn yourself out. He says, I know you think that it's just facilitating five one-hour calls a week, but man, that's 100 people that you're going to want to build relationships and pour into above and beyond. I know who you are. I know how you want to serve people. Do you know how many people are going to have things come up and they're, you're, you're going to want to pour into them? He goes, this is not sustainable long-term. He goes, Cliff, your goal, he says, your goal is to make $10,000 a month, a new stream of income, right? Yeah. And I said, that's correct. He goes, why don't you just create one group and ask 10 people to pay you $1,000 a month? This was in 2012, Gary. And do you know what I told him? What did you tell There's, him? There's no way anybody's ever gonna ever gonna pay me a thousand dollars a month. That's exactly how I would think. That and that that what I'm telling you is that's how I thought in 2012. So what I will tell you is what I was telling you last year yes. was like Dan Miller talking to me in 2012. Here's what I see in front of you. This is this is easy. It ten thousand dollars, one hour a week, Cliff, you got it. And I'm like, there's no way. So I created something called the Podcast Mastermind. I created 10 groups. Uh, actually, I, I think I did five groups, all, filled them up with 10 people in. So I only got to you know $5,000 a month recurring revenue. And it burned me out. After two years, I was burned out and, and I couldn't carry on. Now, the thing is, it was fulfilling. Everyone in it loved it. And after two years to celebrate the second anniversary, I shut it down. Wow. That's, that's, that's pretty wild that, you know, because I mean, it's, it's draining. So I see why you would want to shut it down. But when you think about, okay, I'm getting all this money and this sounds really attractive. It's like, you know, I started a, I started a Patreon this year. That was my, like, it's kind of dipping my toes into the water a little bit on a recurring kind of basis. And, um, yeah, I couldn't imagine reaching those levels. That's I, I wish, I, I wish it was, I wish I could see it clearly. And I, when we, when we talk, I remember that talk that we had and I, I appreciated it so much, but deep down cliff, and this is people want to know if this podcast is, is real. I'm going to give it to you guys as real as I can give it to you right now. I am scared to death. I really I know am. you are. I am scared to death because here's, here's what's on my plate. I, I want to be respectful of your time. I know we only have a few minutes left, so I'm going to make this quick. But like right now, I have probably a million things going on in my mind. I'm roughly about twenty five to thirty thousand dollars in credit card debt. I had two yep. court dates in the last month where I had to go to an answer to these debt uh, collection agencies, and there are more coming. And now, um, you know, I'm doing this podcast. I started a Patreon. I was hoping that you know some people would would come on, and they have, and I really appreciate their support. And I started creating video because I I, I wanted to continue to do things that I love podcasting, creating video in hopes that in, you know, um, a year or two or three, it's going to, you know, take off at some point. And I just deep down, I'm scared as all hell, man. I'm just, I'm just scared to death. I don't know what the future brings. I just know that in my mind that if I keep putting in some, some effort to these things, that something is going to, is going to happen. 
but I don't know for certain that it's going to happen. And that's kind of where I'm at. And so when we had that talk last year, this is before all the legal people started coming and, and, you know, with all the scary letters and all that stuff, but I knew what was on the horizon. And I know that like, when you think about starting any kind of business, you got to launch websites and that costs money. So, you, by the way, that that's a limiting belief right there. Okay. Hit me. What do you got? You don't need to launch a website. Why not? Because you don't need to launch a website. Uh, you could, Gary, you have everything it takes to build a profitable coaching career. I want, you, I want you to see this book. Can you read the name of this book? The Prosperous Coach. Yep, it's The Prosperous Coach by Rich Litvin and Steve Chandler. By the way, Rich Litvin, the co-author of this book, that's the guy I, I'm hoping to pay $100,000 a year to be my coach. All right? Okay. I will tell you, I will tell you right now, I, I encourage you. Will, will you make a commitment to me? I'm going to ask you for a personal favor. Uh, ask me. Will you please listen to episode 615 of the Cliff Ravens Crash Show? I will. It's a one hour and twenty minute episode. I will. I will listen to it. Okay. I. It's it, the title of the episode is "This Changes Everything." All right, that's the title of the episode. And by the way, it will tell you the very real, authentic, true story of how even I got back into a mindset of scarcity. I actually had 24 people paying me $1,000 a month after my transition from Podcast Answer Man to Mindset Answer Man. And once I got my two mastermind groups full, I then shifted all of my focus on marketing free the dream. And as I was marketing free the dream, what happened was some of the people that I invited to the next level mastermind to pay me $1,000 a month, I didn't know how to weed out the wrong people. There were some people who absolutely convinced me that they could afford it. They obviously couldn't. So they dropped out. Yeah. There were some other people that I learned, you know what, you know what, if I would have asked this question, this question, this question, I would have realized from the beginning, I shouldn't have invited them to join. All right. And so as a result of them obviously not being a good fit for the group, they actually dropped out. And so the reason why I was out $38,000 last year is because my monthly recurring revenue was dropping with each person that dropped out of the mastermind group. But I, and I did not start marketing the mastermind group again until after free the dream, because I felt like free the dream needed to be the focus. Remember it was my number one priority, right? By the way, I knew free the, my, and my idea was that free the dream was going to be $60,000 in cost. All right. My thought that as I would actually sell 300 tickets to the event at an average ticket price of, um, a thousand dollars. Now, the thing is, is I did actually get the average ticket price to a thousand dollars, but I only sold 87 tickets. All right. So the thing is, the math didn't work out. Actually, that, that's, that's not true. It was 60 people. 60 people paid $1,000. The rest were speakers and all the other stuff. So if you take all the attendees, it was 87 people. But 60 people paid an average of $1,000. But the thing is, is I was thinking I was going to make at least a $1,000 ticket sale. And if, if I actually get 100 well, there's going to be $40,000 after all of the costs. So that'll make up for that, you know, that little bit. I was totally wrong, got myself into a financial bind, just like what you're not just like what you're talking about be, right. because I didn't go into debt. But the thing is, is I, I did get into some financial situations, right? Which we talked about that got me into some more emotional eating and all that other stuff. Oh yeah. Now the interesting thing though is I was struggling. I started asking myself, Gary, I started asking myself the question. It's like, wait a second. Yeah, sure. I had 24 people at one time paying me a thousand dollars a month. After Free the Dream, I did a marketing campaign for 30 days. I got six more people in 30 days to sign up at $1,000 a month, Gary. In 30 days, six more people signed up to pay me $1,000 a month. Pretty darn awesome, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Here's the problem. That, that was in December of 2018. I started the Next Level Mastermind in November of 2017. Guess what happened in November 2018? What happened? People who... People who made a commitment to join for one year, five of them dropped out after their one-year commitment. Wow. So I, I basically had a net increase of $1,000. And so what did this do to my mindset? This did some things to my mindset. Maybe I'm not worthy of $1,000 a month. 
maybe this, maybe that, maybe I just like, maybe I'm doing the wrong thing. Maybe I should do something cheaper. Maybe I should go back to, you know, to just twice a month and offer a lower cost win and uh, some messed up mindset stuff yeah. until, until July 1st of this year, I read this book called the prosperous coach. You can absolutely fill a paid mastermind group without a single website, without a podcast, without a blog, without a vlog, without an email newsletter, an opt-in form, or anything else online. How do you get them there, though? The Prosperous Coach Method. All you do is you connect with people, invite them to experience your coaching, and, and love them, serve them, give them your, your undivided attention, create an experience where they're, for 90 minutes you're going to have a conversation with them that will change their life, and it's a conversation they'll never forget for as long as they live. And then you give them some tips and some uh, strategies and some techniques to go out and, and you give them an assignment or two, and then two weeks later you schedule another complimentary 90-minute session. And at the end of that second 90-minute session, if things feel right, you make a, a proposal and say, hey, Gary, this has been excellent. You know, at the beginning of the call, I asked you how, how have things been in the last two weeks. And you told me at the, at the beginning, you said, hey, Cliff, I've accomplished more towards my goals in the last two weeks than I have in the last 20 years. This is incredible. And the chances are at the end of the second call, I might be willing to propose to you to say, hey, hey, would you like to continue our relationship and move it forward? But the thing is, is there's a great chance, and this happens actually quite often, where you say, Cliff, okay, enough of this. How do I keep working with you? How, I know that you're a coach and this is what you get paid to do. How, what does it look like for us to work together? Yeah. And, and let me tell you something. I've made $72,000 in the first two weeks after reading this book. That's, that's pretty phenomenal. Yes, it is. <laughs> and and get this, Gary, I filled my next level mastermind PM group completely full in one week. I which it had yeah. it had it had six spots available complete. I filled the other six spots instantly. The next level mastermind AM group filled four spots instantly. I only have three spots left in the AM group. Get this. Nobody gets into my mastermind group for $1,000 a month ever again. Why? Ask me why, Gary. Why do they not get in your mastermind group for $1,000? You will never be able to join my next level mastermind for anything less than $25,000 one-time upfront payment for the year. <sighs> wow. Or, hold on, or if you do choose to pay monthly, you will pay $2,250 a month. Wow. It's up your, and, you upped your price there. I did. And guess what? Gary, by the end of this year, I will have a third member, a third mastermind group where, where 12 people have paid me $25,000 for the year. I will not need a single mailing list to do it. I will not need to create a single podcast episode to do it. I will not need a single vlog episode to do it. By the way, will I use those methods? Sure. I yep. will use those methods. I have an audience, right? Yes. But do I need them? Absolutely not. Wow. That's, man. That, hey, let oh. me ask you this. <laughs> let me ask you this. Do you see why I want to pay $100,000 to have this man as my personal coach? I can see now, based on the information you're getting out of that book. Yeah. And by the way, the, get this. Um, Gary, I want to tell you a story. Okay. There's this guy from Germany. He listened to episode 610 of my podcast. And I said, hey, if you ever want to reach me, reach me on Voxer. And so he reached me on Voxer. Cliff, you know, you asked me to reach you on Voxer. And one of the things you said, as long as if we reach out to us, we have to tell you what our dream is. And so he, to he told me what his dream was. And his dream was to get out of the technical consulting where he's doing marketing work for clients. Yeah. And he wouldn't. He says, what I really love in my zone of genius is really coaching and teaching people how to do it themselves. And I want to come alongside and encourage them. I did a workshop the other day, and I love the small group dynamic. And so I'm thinking I'd like to do small group workshops. I'm thinking you know, I might do coaching. And Cliff, I've even been tossing around the idea of doing this one on or doing this paid mastermind group. Now, wait, a, it's like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> it's like. I, so I, I, I said back to this guy, I said, hey, it just so happens I happen to have a paid mastermind group. And at the time, it was still $1,000 a month. 
Yes. And I said, it's a thousand dollars a month. Have you ever, since you're going to be, since you're thinking and contemplating asking people to pay you 500 euros a month to be a part of your mastermind group, have you ever considered paying to be in a mastermind group? It, you know, just, just wink, wink, nod, nod. It might yeah. help you with your credibility. You know what I'm saying? And he wrote back, he goes, Cliff, thank you so much. And yes, I've heard about your mastermind group. I've certainly thought about it. But there, let me explain to you the five reasons. Actually, it was three. Here are the three reasons why it is literally impossible for me to pay you $1,000 a month to be in your mastermind group. And he shared with me what those three reasons were. And, and, and Gary, his financial situation didn't sound a whole lot different from yours. Yes. All right? I, I won't go in and I won't share his personal details, but he his, his, his were pretty dire. Yeah. All right. Now, the only thing is, though, different from you is that he already has he's already full time self-employed and yes. he's already making a very significant amount of income from a, a, a well-known, established audience who are paying him for his technical consulting business. All right. Now, the thing is, though, that he hates the work. It's driving him crazy. He doesn't like it. He wants to reinvent himself as a coach, and he wants to do workshops, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and I happen to know a way for him to crush it and knock it out of the park. Not only would he be able to pay for my mastermind group, but in three months, I'm convinced he would fill an entire group of 10 people at 500 euros. Yeah. And so I wrote back, I, I sent him a message back and I said, here's, here's all these things. I'm not going to try to hard sell you or try to, this doesn't, isn't a sales pitch, but here's the, all the things that I'm thinking. And here's what I see. Again, remember, this is what I see laying at your feet. Yes. You don't see it, but I do. And I can tell you how to take what's laying at your feet and turn it into recurring revenue within 90 days. But I can only I can only invest the amount of time it would take for me to help you see it and to get over all the mindset baggage you have holding you back from it. The only way I can do that is through a weekly ongoing mastermind relationship with you. And so if you and so all I did was that and I said, but listen, I get it. If it I, there's no doubt you could eventually do all of this and you'll eventually come to see it on your own. I don't know how long it would take you, but if you were interested in doing it within 90 days, let me know. Right. That's. And he said the very next morning on Voxer, he goes, Cliff, I went to your, your group. I went to nextlevelmastermind.info. I read your sales page. I watched the video. He goes, okay, I'm in. Wow. He says, I, he goes, matter of fact, and by the way, Gary, I want to tell you a phrase. What do you think when, I, when you hear this phrase? And I think I may have done this for you about a year ago. Okay. I, al I always have plenty of money for everything I truly want. It sounds like, you know, you, you will get it no matter what, when, when you need it, you'll find a way Yeah. once you, once you truly see the thing is, is he didn't truly want to pay to be in a thousand dollar mastermind group when I asked him. Right. Yes. So when I told him what was available to him and the thing is, is he's been listening to me and he, and he says, he's, he goes, Cliff, I listen to your show every single week. I've never missed an episode for years. So Gary, one thing I know is that he knows that when I tell him something, I'm not blowing smoke. He knows that I'm genuine. He knows I'm honest. He knows I'm a straight shooter. Yes. And I would never say something that I couldn't back up. So all of a sudden, when I told him, I like, dude, have you ever heard of the story Acres of Diamonds? No, I've not heard of that one. You need to look up the eight, just do a YouTube search at your next workout and, and, and see if you can't find somebody who will tell you the story of the Acres of Diamonds. Okay. All right. The thing is, is this guy is literally living on acres of diamonds and he's, you know, he, and, and he's trying to go out and through to the world to try to see if he can find out how to become wealthy. And he's going to sell his plot of land for next to nothing because he's heard that the wealth is everywhere else in the world. Yeah, He's freaking sitting on a, <laughs> a diamonds, acres yeah. of them. All right. So go. It's a great story. You're by the way, Gary, you're literally sitting on an acre of diamonds. All right. That's you. That's where you're at. Now, the thing is, is this guy knows me enough to say Cliff would never steer me wrong. So he, so he get he gets in there and he's like, oh my gosh, I've heard, I've been, and he's been listening to my other content and he's like, okay, I've seen what Cliff has been doing. I've seen what he's gone through and I know something's changed. I've noticed the change and I want what he has and I want to be in his mastermind group. Just like Gary, I can't afford a hundred thousand dollars. 
But then all of a sudden I'm like, but I really want Rich Litvin as my coach. So now how am I going to do it? And for me, that's $4,000 a month. All I need are two people to join my new mastermind group. And I've got that paid for. Yeah. Yeah. I, All right. I, I do remember my computer breaking down and I needed a new computer to continue to edit podcasts, edit video. And I sold a ton of things in my house to get that money because I needed it. There you go. You all you always have plenty of money. You'll find the resources for the things you truly must have. Yes. All right. So here's what I will tell you. He says, Cliff, I want in. I'm in. I've got a I've got two different consulting packages. One of them's 500 euros per month, and one of them's 800 euros per month. And the conversion to U.S. dollars. He's like, listen, at two hundred two of those packages, I already know the clients that I'm going to reach out to. I'll be able to sell that by the end of the week. That's got me covered. Or I could just do the 800 per month uh, euro package and just one of those will pay your thing. And then if you can help me get any members in my mastermind group, which is what I really want to do with my life, then then I, th it's going to pay for itself. And so he went and he got that. He's like, boom, he signed up instantly. He's been in my mastermind group for two weeks. He's read the Prosperous Coach book twice. He's been applying the principles every single week. He's done a handful of these first complimentary coaching calls, and he had his first, second complimentary coaching experience today, and the very first person he proposed to signed up for his $500, I'm sorry, 500 euro per month mastermind group today. Wow. That's a big commitment. Two, two weeks later, he's already got his first paid mastermind group. And by the way, during the first two weeks, he had all sorts of mindset issues. But did he get over them? Absolutely. Why? Because he had a coach who was consistently helping him blast out all of those limiting beliefs. Yeah. Damn. I got some work to do. That's, 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 that's what's on my mind right now. I got some work to do. <laughs> Cliff, I got to tell you, man, I really appreciate our chat. I'm glad that we could uh, catch up and, and do the podcast. And it was uh, really great talking to you. Um, tell the people uh, where you'd like them to check you out at. You know, the best place to check me out is a free uh, one hour video that I give away. It's over at mindsetanswerman.com slash free mindsetanswerman.com slash free. If you go there, the top of the page, it says, give me one hour and I will teach you how to live the life of your dreams. It's a pretty bold statement. That is pretty one thing bold. I, one thing I can tell you is that I never, I never overpromise. I underpromise over deliver. So here's what I will say. Go to mindsetanswerman.com slash free, sign up for free access to the one hour video, and I will teach you why it is that you consistently fail to do the things that you say you're going to do in your life and why you consistently fail to give up the bad behaviors that are holding you back from the life of your dreams. I need to go watch that damn video. That's what I think. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't do. watched it. I, I need to watch that. Mindsetanswerman.com slash free. Uh, by the way, 900 people in the last 30 days have watched it. And after three hours, I, you get an automated email. that says, did you get what I promised? Every single person has wrote back. There are three responses. I've watched it three times in the last three hours. I need, I've need. i already watched it. I need to watch it again and take notes. Uh, actually, there are four responses. That's the other response. The next response is I was going – I, I downloaded it or I, I, I signed up for it. I thought I was going to put it on and I was going to listen to it in the background but you had dog on it, Cliff. You killed my productivity. But man, I'm so glad you did. Uh, I could. I was glued to the video the entire time. And then the fourth one is I'm still crying right now. Wow. Well, everybody, go check that video out. I'm I'm going to go and and sign up for that as soon as we get off of here. Awesome, man. Cliff, thank you so much. And also, I uh, for I, we have a lot of people on Instagram that listen to this. Your Instagram handle is. Cliff EOTC. So my first name is Cliff. EOTC stands for encouraging others through Christ. If you don't like the faith based stuff of it, and by the way, Gary will tell you, I don't sit there and throw Jesus around and scriptures and all that stuff. I'm not that guy. I've been following uh, you so, for like eight years now. I, I definitely don't get that vibe at all. So no. So yeah. if you if you want, it's Cliff encouraging others through content. How's that? 
There you go. There you go. I love it. Cliff, thank you so much for your time, man. It was a wonderful uh, chat with you. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Gary. Anytime you want to chat, I'm here, brother. Remember at the beginning of the show, I mentioned a little thing called Patreon? Well, I'd love to have you join me. But Gary, what is Patreon? It's a website that is helping small creators like me raise funds to further expand their creative visions. For as low as $1 a month, you can help me further my dream of reaching as many people as possible and eventually taking the show on the road to meet all these fine people face to face and add a video element to this podcast. If you were to donate $4 a month, you'd be hearing this show a few days earlier with no commercials and getting access to my close friends group on Instagram. Donate $10 a month and you get all that plus your name right at the beginning of the show alongside other producers. But act fast. That tier is limited to 10 people. I've got a whole lot more to offer and you can get all the details over at patreon.com slash Gary Cantrell. If you made it this far, I really appreciate you. Thanks so much for checking out the show and I'll talk to you again really soon. Hardworkalwayswins.com. It's more than just a clothing line. It's my mantra. I speak it. I wear it. I live it. And I'd love to have you join the Hard Work Squad. We're constantly adding new items to the store, including our brand new future-ish hats, which come in a variety of colors, including camo. I mean, who doesn't like camo? We also just put our famous splash logo in gold to match our OG logo. And there's so much more here. You just got to check it out. Here's the best part. Use the code podcast at checkout to take 10% off of your very first order and join the hard work squad today.